Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this story. I'm going to try and upload a new story each day. The Abandoned Carnival Ride The Isle of Wight was often praised for its beauty, but not many people knew the secrets it held. Among the rolling hills and scenic coastlines, there was a forgotten relic that the locals avoided an old amusement park left to decay on the island's southern tip. The park had been closed for decades, ever since a tragic accident flamed the lives of several visitors on its most infamous attraction, a ride known only as the Spectre. Holly Arnold, a freelance maintenance worker, was not from the Isle of Wight. She had only heard about the abandoned amusement park from an old caretaker who hired her to clean up the grounds and make sure nothing posed a hazard to curious tourists. The park had gained a reputation as a haunted site, but Holly didn't believe in ghosts. She was practical, focused on the task at hand, repair the fences, check for dangerous debris, and leave before nightfall. It was her last day on the job, and the rain had turned the already decayed park into a muddy wasteland. Weeds grew through the cracked asphalt, and rust had consumed most of the metal structures. The rides were airy skeletons of their former selves, some barely recognizable under layers of grime. Holly had one final area to inspect the section that housed the spectre. The old caretaker had warned her to avoid it. That ride killed people, he had said. It's cursed, they say. We best leave it be. She made her way toward the ride, the rain pounding against her hood, obscuring her view as the towering frame of the spectre came into focus. The ride was monstrous, a hybrid between a roller coaster and a haunted house attraction. Its track went through a series of dark tunnels and grotesque, decaying sculptures that once must have been ghoulishly playful. Now, they looked more like something pulled from the depths of a nightmare. The control booth for the spectre was covered in vines and grime, its window cracked but still intact. Inside, Holly found a mess of old wires and controls, most of which were long dead. Still, she couldn't help her curiosity. She fiddled with one of the levers, half expecting nothing to happen. To her shock, the ride whirred to life with a sputtering groan. The ancient gears began to churn, shaking off years of dust. Lights flickered along the tracks, dim and ghostly. Holly's stomach dropped. There was no way the park still had power. She yanked her hand away from the controls, but the ride didn't stop. Instead, the spectre began its slow, dreadful ascent. The chain lift, despite its rusted exterior, clanked and dragged the ride's lone cart toward the summit. Holly's breath caught in her throat. It was as if the ride had been waiting, dormant, for someone to wake it. She turned to leave, but the booth door slammed shut behind her with a force that shook the walls. Panic welled in her chest as she struggled with the handle, but it was locked, jammed, as if welded shut by an unseen hand. Holly banged on the door, shouting for help, though she knew there was no one to hear her. The ride reached the top of its peak, and for a brief moment, everything was still. The cart hung in the air, poised on the edge of a drop that disappeared into a tunnel below, a black maw waiting to swallow it whole. Holly's heart pounded as she pressed herself against the glass, watching in disbelief. The cart plummeted down the track, rushing into the darkness. But as it disappeared, she saw something she couldn't explain the figures, shadowy and twisted, sitting in the seats. They were there, then gone, consumed by the blackness of the tunnel. Her hands trembled as she frantically pressed buttons, trying to shut off the ride. The machinery groaned, the lights flickered more violently, and a cold gust swept through the booth, freezing the air around her. Holly felt the temperature drop rapidly, her breath now visible in the chill. A soft, melodic voice drifted through the wind. But come ride with us. She spun around, searching for the source, but the booth was empty. The only sound was the creaking of the ride and her own frantic breathing. If come her ride, the voice was louder now, surrounding her. The shadows in the distance began to move. They coalesced around the base of the spectre, pooling like ink at the ride's entrance. Shapes formed grotesque, hollow-eyed figures, skeletal passengers waiting for the next ride. They beckoned her. Holly's mind screamed to run, but her body wouldn't move. Her legs felt like they had been filled with lead. The shadows crept closer, climbing the rusted metal beams of the ride, their hollow faces contorted in silent screams. Their eyes for what should have been eyes focused on her with malevolent hunger. 
With a burst of adrenaline, Holly managed to force her body into action. She slammed her fist into the emergency stop button. The machinery screeched to a halt, the lights flickered one final time, and then the ride went dead. Silence returned to the park, thick and suffocating. But the shadows remained. They were no longer distant. They were inside the booth with her, inches from her face, their breath icy against her skin. Suddenly, the door to the booth flew open, and Holly stumbled backward, falling to the ground outside. She scrambled to her feet, the mud clinging to her boots. She ran, her heart hammering in her chest. She didn't dare look back. She ran until the park was a distant memory, until the sound of her own footsteps was the only thing she could hear. By the time she reached her car, drenched and shivering, the rain had stopped. She collapsed into the driver's seat, her hand shaking as she fumbled for the keys. When she finally turned the ignition, she could still hear the soft clanking of the ride echoing through her mind. She looked up into the rearview mirror and saw them. The shadowy figures were there sitting in the back seat, their hollow eyes locked onto her. Come ride the whisper slid through her mind as she let out a silent scream. And in that moment, Holly knew that she would never truly leave the park. The spectre had claimed her, just like it had claimed the others before her. No one ever leaves the ride. And no one ever escapes the spectre. Holly's scream choked in her throat as the shadowy figures sat and moving in the back seat. Her skin prickled as their eyes black, soulless voids bore into her, but she dared not turn around. The engine roared to life beneath her trembling hands, and she slammed her foot on the gas. The car lurched forward, tires squealing as they fought for traction on the slick road. The headlights pierced the misty darkness, casting long shadows that seemed to stretch and writhe as if the night itself was alive. Holly's heart raced. Every fiber of her being screamed to keep going, to drive as fast as she could to escape the cursed park. But the figures in the back seat remained, their cold presence seeping into the air like a slow poison. Come, ride. The whisper came again, as if carried on the wind. It burrowed deep into Holly's mind, an insidious invitation. She gripped the steering wheel tighter, her knuckles white. I won't, she muttered under her breath, as if trying to convince herself. I won't go back, the road twisted and turned through the fog, and for a moment Holly felt a flicker of hope. Maybe she could outrun it. Maybe whatever curse lingered over that park would fade as soon as she left the island. The ferry, if she could just reach the ferry, she could leave it all behind. But the shadows had other plans. The temperature in the car plummeted again, frost crawling over the inside of the windows. Holly's breath fogged the glass, her teeth chattering. The radio crackled to life, spitting out a distorted, warbling tune, a carnival song, slow and grotesque. She slammed her hand on the dial, trying to turn it off, but the song continued, growing louder. The icy wind whipped through the cracks in the door, howling like a distant scream. Holly's hand slipped on the wheel as frost began to form there, too. The shadows shifted in the back seat, their movements more defined now, more human or once human. In the rearview mirror, Holly caught a glimpse of one of them a woman, or what had been a woman, dressed in tattered carnival clothes. Her face was pale, almost translucent, with hollow eyes that stared into Holly's soul. Her mouth stretched into a grotesque grin. Ride with us a forever. Holly's stomach twisted in terror. The car began to slow, despite her foot being pressed hard on the accelerator. Annex urged. The engine whined, spattered it, and then stopped. The car coasted to a hull, shrouded in thick fog, the oppressive silence closing in. It no, no. Holly yelled, banging on the steering wheel. But it was useless. The shadows were creeping closer, their twisted forms crawling from the back seat, reaching for her with skeletal hands. Holly flung open the car door and stumbled out, gasping for air. The world around her was eerily still. There were no sounds of the night, no rustling trees, no chirping crickets. Only silence. The fog curled around her ankles, thick and unnatural, hiding the road ahead. She ran. Her boots pounded against the pavement, her breath ragged in the freezing air. The mist swallowed everything, and Holly soon realized she was no longer on the road. The landscape around her had shifted to as the trees loomed overhead, their branches clawing at the sky, and the distant shape of something massive towered ahead. Her heart sank. It was the spectre. 
The right had somehow followed her, its rusted frame silhouetted against the fog. The entrance yawned before her, the rides caught waiting on the track as if it had been expecting her all along. Holly tried to stop, tried to turn back, but her feet wouldn't listen. They moved on their own, dragging her toward the cursed ride. A voice echoed in her mind a deeper now, more sinister. You can't run. You belong to us, Holly's vision blurred as she was pulled toward the cart. She fought her mind screaming in resistance, but the force was too strong. She was yanked into the cart, her body slanting into the cold metal seat. Restraints clamped down over her shoulders, locking her in place. The ride jolted to life, the chain lift groaning as it pulled her toward the peak. Holly's breath came in shallow, panic gasps as the cart ascended, higher and higher. The fog swelled around her, and she could hear voices now laughter, distant screams, the clinking of carnival games. The air smelled of burnt popcorn and rusted machinery. When the cart reached the top, everything went silent. Holly's eyes widened as the track ahead vanished into darkness. It was like staring into a void, an endless pit that waited to devour her. The cart plunged forward. The wind roared in her ears, a cacophony of screams and laughter blending together in a nightmarish symphony. The track twisted and turned, throwing her side to side. Shadows raced alongside her, whispering her name, their hollow faces leering at her with each sharp turn. But something was different this time. As the ride continued, the landscape began to change. The dark tunnels gave way to glimpses of her past, her childhood home, her old school, places she hadn't seen in years. But they were wrong, distorted. Her childhood home was crumbling, the windows broken, and shadows moved within. The schoolyard was overgrown with thorny vines, the swings creaking with invisible riders. It wasn't just her past. It was her life, twisted, consumed by the darkness that had claimed her. The ride was showing her everything she had ever feared, her failures, her regrets, her worst nightmares made real. And then, as the cart took another plunge into the abyss, she saw them. The passengers from the accident. The ones who had died on the spectre all those years ago. They were waiting at the bottom of the drop, their faces frozen in terror, their bodies broken and mangled, forever trapped on the ride. The cart sped toward them, and Holly screamed. She knew, in that moment, that there would be no escaping this. The spectre didn't just claim lives, it consumed souls, trapping them in an endless loop of torment. As the cart hurtled into the mass of twisted bodies, everything went black. Holly opened her eyes to the sound of creaking metal. She was back at the top of the ride, the cart once again poised at the edge of the drop. The same fog swelled below, the same eerie silence filled the air. And she knew, with a sinking dread, that the ride was starting again. She was trapped, just like the others. Forever. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please don't forget to like and even better like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I hope you have had or have a great day.